John Griff, BBC Radio Northampton. Uh, in my company, James McInerney, the well-known uh, Northamptonshire poet. You've been fo- filming stuff recently. Have you been making documentaries or something, um, James? I'm going to be soon. Um, it's still, it is in the process, but um, yeah, that's going to happen. Got loads of things coming up, so it's all good things to look forward to. Is the documentary about you? Or are you contributing to it, it? It is about me working with actors, actresses, because um, I do a lot of that. I like, I like writing, but I also like to see my poems voiced and I'm not great at voicing poems so I get actors and actresses of YouTube musicians and they all kind of voice things like that so so you give them the words and they then bring them to life yeah they interpret them however they want I mean I have had musicians do things with them turn them into songs and it's just been it's kind of another string to the bow kind of thing you know and I love doing it and how are you with the writing of the lyrics and the poetry in the first place? Because that's not the work of five minutes, is it? No, it takes time. I, I use music. I'm walking along, got my headphones in, you know, um, kind of like writing thoughts down, and it becomes a poem. You've got a you've got a lad who's off to university fairly yep. soon. So is that going to provide a, a happy hunting ground for, uh, for for thoughts for you as a poet? In that, yeah. Place? I mean, we went to London just recently, and it's amazing up there. The culture, the buildings, it's so inspiring when you walk up there. It's, it's a different world completely to Northampton. <laughs> We will talk about this again. I'm, I'm, it, this is great. I'm talking to all kinds of people today and finding that I've got a whole new series of shows lined up. We've asked you to look at the papers and yep. then give us your reaction uh, to the stories that are there this morning. So this is very much James McInerney's spin through the papers and his, re- his, his reaction. You are probably very well placed to see through the words that journalists use prosaically rather than perhaps in a poetry, poetry sense. What's jumped out for you as the biggest story? Well, if everyone doesn't know, <coughs> on the 29th of March... It's Brexit. Oh, We're really? Leaving. <laughs> Surely not. That's gone under the wire. <clears throat> Every time I come down, it's Brexit, Brexit. Um, <laughs> multiple papers, multiple headlines, you know, stopping the second vote. Um, what second vote? I know, people want a second vote, don't they? Apparently everyone wants to vote again. So trying to oust Theresa May so kind of Boris Johnson can step in there as well. That's kind of a happening. And... Theresa May saying she won't surrender to Brussels, water down her Brexit plans during negotiations with the EU. But it was only this week that we were starting to p- perhaps hear through Michel Barnier that there will actually be a deal done. And as a result, the value of the pound shot up against the dollar and against the euro as well. So that was good economically. It, it's turned into a bit of a pantomime, hasn't it? Do, it do, is, do you yeah. sense that from the writing? It's all, uh, it's kind of every page is full of different stories, different accounts. It's, it's kind of like all up in the air, all over the place. There's no real direction, is there? No clear voice that says this is what's happened it's just a bit of chaos really isn't it so we still don't know what brexit is going to mean in practical terms but we've all got a view about it somehow and how far do you feel we're being led by the papers through what they write um there are both sides of the story being shown um because there's so many different stories i think everyone's got their opinion now it's been going on for so long Mm. um and we've still got till the 29th of march next year to go and then after that we're still going to be talking about brexit um but yeah i just think but even st- now, we don't really know what's going to go happen when it happens. You write words with a view to getting a reaction from mm. people who either hear your poetry or mm. perhaps read it for themselves. Do you sense that the journalists are doing that as well? Are they manhandling us without us realising There is it? shock and horror, or kind of like, you know, mass headlines to make you want to read and kind of change your mind about things. But I think the best thing to do is to read all of them and kind of make your own opinion because there are so many opinions out there and online and everything that no one really knows. And so like I say, until it happens, which is a long time off yet, mm. um, we're not going to know, are we? I'm not going to go down the route of asking about Donald Trump and fake news, but we're oh, perhaps yes. not a million miles away from it. That could be a whole different debate. All right, Brexit is very uh, high up on the uh, on the news agenda for today. What else has uh, caught your eye? Two funerals um, of kind of big stars, one of... Aretha Franklin, mm. the legend, soul singer, mm. um, and she's in the news because she's got a £60 million fortune. Lovely. Um, with no will. What? Yes. She left no will. She, it goes by law to her four sons, right. but a kind of former fiancé wants a chunk of the cash. That That is quite astonishing because she had been unwell for quite some time. Mm. You would have thought having children... Uh, that she would have a will of some di- some description, or, yeah. or, or, or there would be some provision that was made. Is there a is there a sense from the writing that this is now going to get well, possibly litigious? Is, is this going to end up well, in court? Of course, it's a lot of money, sixty million, and of course, all the people come out of the woodwork, don't mm. they? At that mm. point, um, and it's a bit sad, really, because she had a good career, and to to end it, you know, she, at the end, she had a gold plated coffin. 
Um, 100 pink Cadillacs, you know, she had free presidential tributes. It was a big event. It was about seven hours, I she, think it was. She on. went out in some style. Yes. It, it may be said. She had former presidents mm. uh, eulogising. She had some great musical performances as well. It was, I mean, it was being billed as a private family burial, and that may well have been the case, but there was a lot of hoopla that went yes. with it, which is great fodder for, for wordsmiths, isn't it? It is. I mean, it went on for about seven hours. <laughs> um, it was a long event, but yeah, it was just a shame to have a career marred at the end by mm. scrabbling over who's going to get the money at the end. I seem to recall something similar happened when Prince died. Mm. There, was, there was the same sort of thing with all kinds of people coming out of the woodwork and claiming their share of whatever estate there is. I'm not sure that that's even been resolved. It, again, does it does it seem as though this is going to take a long time to sort out? It will out? be. It's a lot of money. And it's such is life. And in the meantime, it's the, there's the danger of tarnishing the memory of the woman herself. Exactly, and it's a last kind of thing you remember isn't it and okay, obviously another funeral was sent to John McCain as well mm. um, who wasn't a fan of Trump and that was nor what, he of, of yes, McCain yes and actually Trump was not invited to the funeral either so again that was another star studded event um, with loads of I think Obama was there as well because you know he f went up against Obama in 2008 and lost um, so yeah two big high-profile funerals. A lot of people have been saying that John McCain was a, was a true hero. He saw war service, he was a, a prisoner of war, was, yeah. and, and, and suffered dreadfully as a result of that. But he still came through, and he still had a sort of public service aspect to him. Uh, Trump got into all kinds of trouble because he, he, he wasn't exactly forthcoming with his praise of the man, even so, even though they, you know, they locked horns every once in a while. He, he, he kind of took that beyond... Uh, the death of Senator McCain and continued it when McCain had already died. Yeah, I know. Um, typical with Trump with the tweets, you know. And it's just, again, it's for publicity. It's a, it's a thing. Um, again, it, takes away from the fact of what he was. Do you think that that direct access that the President of the United States seeks to have with his electorate through Twitter, do mm. you think that's going to come back to haunt him? I think so. I think it should be monitored about what he posts because he does post some stuff for you know to get mm. the attention of the people and with 128 characters yes that could be misinterpreted very easily i mean you'll know that yes as, as you, a man of words you are limited um but i think yeah he's just got to be as, as a president of the united states surely there should be someone there saying to him you can't post that you and know yet, and yet he does he does yeah so that is perhaps the maverick of the man all right fair enough so some very high profile funerals uh, give me one more sort of big story from your point of view james um well to make it nicer entertainment Declan Donnelly and his wife, they've had a baby together. First child, Isla Elizabeth Ann, which is really nice, made made a nice piece. Um, their first ever child together, so... Well, that's, that's a nice family story, particularly as I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here is coming up fairly soon, and his television wife is going to be Holly Willoughby. Yeah, it is, yeah, obviously, so, yeah. So Declan's not going to have very long with his baby before he, before he has to go down under and get involved with uh, with uh, commercial television. But they pay get paid good bucks, don't they? Good money. <laughs> <laughs> Very well put. Yes. I see I see where you're going with that one. James, some fascinating stories that people are going to have a look at for themselves. New work to come out from yourself? Yes, the fourth book, The Pieces That Collide, is out at the end of this year. The Pieces That Collide. Keep an eye on that. We'll get him in to talk about it, uh, maybe on the book club before too much longer. Uh, hard at it. When do you um, get involved with the with the documentary and when might we um, see that's you? That's going to probably be beginning next year. Because right. I've got the book to come out and that's going to take a lot of work. Um, and then we'll start then. Come in and talk about both a little bit closer to the time, won't you? Will do. Have a great Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. John Griff, BBC Radio Northampton.